Hi, how are you? So the information in this video is so important that if you're trying to relocate to Canada through the study route to be a permanent resident, you need to watch this. I get a lot of questions all the time and I have collated some of the most frequently asked questions to answer. Now these questions come up all the time, even though the answers are there, but people are really confused and I want to use this video to explain some of these answers. We'll probably have to do a part two because there's so many questions. So let's start. said my friend said I cannot get permanent resident in Canada after a one-year study the first thing I want to say is that stop listening to friends like that yeah so except your friend has expertise in Canada immigration they probably don't know the truth is that there are a lot of people coming to Canada with a one-year study and they are getting permanent residence there are several ways and several means for you to get permanent residence even on a one-year study now I agree that you're only getting probably a one-year post-graduation work permit and you're scared that that might not be enough for you to get permanent residence but trust me it is enough I made a video and I'll put the link up here where I spoke extensively about how you can get permanent residence even with a one-year study go ahead and watch that video the link is somewhere above here the second question we have is can someone who is not related to me sponsor me to come study in Canada uh, I guess that's a tough one uh, because it's easier to prove relationship to someone who is related to you maybe an uncle a parent a sibling a spouse and it's easy to justify why they are willing to spend all that money to sponsor you to come study in Canada. But if this is someone who is not related to you, it becomes harder for you. And the onus is on you to show the visa officer that this is really genuine sponsorship. You know why? Because you need to get a lot of information from them, including their bank statements. They may need to also send the money to your account. And if this person is just someone you just want to use to show that they are going to sponsor you and they are not really willing to sponsor you, it might be difficult for you to get all those documents. So it's not impossible. I've seen it happen. But please know that there are certain things that you need to put in place if you want to be sponsored financially by someone who is not related to you. The number three question is, can I come to Canada to study with my family? Certainly, yes. Canada is a family-friendly country and they encourage you to come with your family if you're coming to study. There are so many people who have used our system, the Canada Java system, to come to Canada with their families. The only thing with coming to Canada with your family is that you need to show proper home ties as well as enough money to cover the expenses of your family that are coming to stay with you in Canada. As long as you have those home ties, you have um, all the funding, sufficient funding to cover them, your tuition, as well as living expenses, I don't see why you get approval to come to Canada with your family so if that's a problem you've been thinking about you can relax and just make sure that your application meets all these requirements that I have just mentioned the next question we'll be answering is how many hours can I work as an international student and can I work to pay my tuition and living expenses so as an international student who got your study visa approved before October of 2022 you can work full time that's 20, 40 hours a week however if you got your study visa after October 2022 you can only work 20 hours a week and this is off campus you can work on campus full time it doesn't affect the 20 hours limit now whether you can actually use the money you get from that work to pay your tuition and living expenses is in doubt yeah because you're working part-time you're working as a student which means you're probably getting minimum wage which is about $16 in Ontario and it's even less in some other province so even if you worked 20 hours a week at $16 an hour and you do the calculation I don't know how that is going to pay for your tuition however I think that it can pay for your expenses your rent clothes books transportation phone and all those other things it will pay for that but to pay for your tuition especially if you're here with family might be difficult but if you're here with your spouse and your family your spouse can work full-time because they have that spouse and open work permit so they can work full-time and combined with the money that you make from your part-time it could go a long way to helping with your expenses including your tuition another question that I get all the time is can I come to Canada on time maybe three to four months before I am due to study and start hustling that start working to get money um, for myself maybe to help me when I start studying 
that is very dangerous the answer is no first of all by the time you get to the airport like three to four months before your study an immigration officer will wonder and they will ask you why you're in canada so early and what be tidy if you tell them that you came to work <laughs> they'll probably send you back and also they would want to see that you have enough like sufficient finances sufficient money to take care of yourself before school starts yeah so if they don't see all that it might be a sad story to tell so you are only allowed legally to start working when you start your study so you would have registered for studies you would have started um, studying before you are allowed to work that is the legal thing to do i know a lot of people are in a hurry to come to canada they want to come and hustle get some money but be very careful so that you don't get into trouble because you want to do that so some people also fret over the fact that their international passport will expire before their studies are over. For example, maybe they are studying up until 2027 and their international passport will expire by 2026 and they're worried, do I have to go back to my country to renew my passport? What about my study permit? You don't have to worry about all that. All countries have an embassy here in Canada um, in Ottawa, so even if your international passport is expiring, you can go there and renew it and you can always extend your study permit. You can do this online. That should not be a problem. So you can extend your study permit inside Canada. You can also get your passport renewed inside Canada. So one other popular question that I get is, can I marry a Canadian permanent resident or citizen? Will I get papers? Will I become a citizen as well? <laughs> Very funny. There are lots of guys who are trying this strategy. Well, if you marry a Canadian permanent resident or a citizen, you do not become a citizen. You actually become a permanent resident. So, um, and you still have to go through um, the timeline to become a Canada um, permanent resident it's a good one because you become a permanent resident even though you're an international student so you don't have to go through the issues of trying to find the way to become a permanent resident another question that's related to this one is people asking a lot of a lot of ladies asking oh i'm pregnant i want to come to canada as a student but i also want to have my baby number one will i be paying medical fees and number two will my child be a canada citizen so good news for all the ladies that are planning to come here and have their babies. Number one, your child will become a Canada citizen. So any child born in Canada will be a Canada citizen. Then as far if you're going to pay medical fees, if you're a student, you're covered under, you have insurance from your school. I doubt that you'll be paying any medical fees um, for giving birth in Canada. I think I've seen a lot of students who have given birth in Canada and they didn't have to pay for that. But however, if you come as a visitor, you would need to find a hospital and pay the medical, medical bills to have your child here. But your child will still be a Canada citizen, whether you're a visitor or a student or a permanent resident. So people are also asking if they can pay their tuition instrumentally. So schools will take tuition from your student account every term. You don't have to pay the entire tuition fee in um, at one time, like the entire one year of tuition fee. So it is taken instrumentally from your student account um, for every term. So I believe that's instrumental because you don't have to pay all of it at once. And if you're unable to pay, I think if you talk to the um, student body, maybe student office or your departmental office, they can arrange a paying schedule for you so, um, so you don't have to get stressed too much about not paying. Some schools will stop you from registering. Uh, if you don't pay up, some schools have certain measures that they can impose on you, but make sure that you're talking to your department head or someone in the international office that can help you if you have that issue. And of course, money is always one of the most frequently asked questions. How much do I need to study in Canada? The, the answer is, I don't know. You know what? Because it depends on a lot of factors. Number one, it depends on your tuition. It depends on the number of family members that you're coming with. And it depends on how long you're coming to study. Of course, you need to add your, your effort to get to and fro and any miscellaneous. If you're studying for more than one year, you also need to let the visa officer know how your fees or your tuition for subsequent years will be paid. So that's like a template or a snapshot of how you can calculate how much you're going to need to study in Canada. Let's now talk about grades. Lots of people have probably third class or a pass and they're wondering, what can I study in Canada? I have a pass, I have a third class. Will I be able to do a master's in Canada? Because with my third class, I also have a postgraduate diploma. The requirements for a master's in Canada is a four-year bachelor's degree, and you also have to have a 3.0 GPA out of a 4.0.
if you don't meet this requirement it might be difficult for you to get a master's a master's degree admission in canada now i said difficult i didn't say impossible i've seen lots of people who have gotten a master's um, admission with a tutu but that's because they had other things maybe they had a master's they had um, so many years of work experience and this is usually in the business degrees but when it comes to stem a lot of schools will stick to the 3.0 gpa and the 2-1 requirement but if you have a third class or maybe a pass or a tutu you can actually do a postgraduate certificate or an advanced diploma there are also schools that will do a, a post bachelorate degree for you and could take your less than 2-2 um, gpa you just have to reach out to the schools, look at their website, browse the program requirements, and also send them an email and tell them what you have, and they will get back to you and tell you if it is possible. Um, so if you were asking also what documents do I need to start my study in Canada plan, um, the major documents that you need, you need to have your international passport, um, you need to have your certificate and your transcript. That's where you need to get admission. And then, of course, when it comes to visa, you need to have enough funds, <laughs> sufficient funds to show the visa officer for, your, for one year of study. And then you also need to have home ties. We'll probably talk a bit about home ties in another video, but I think I have a video. I'm going to try and put it here where I talked about home ties in detail. So that's going to help you. Um, I mean, figure out what home ties you need to put in your application. People also ask a lot about, they think the process is difficult. Can I do this process all by myself? I don't have money to pay an agent or to pay an immigration consultant. Can I do this all by myself? And that's where I have the most joy because yes, I know you can do it by yourself. I came to Canada as an international student. I did it all by myself. And with my experience, I have developed or created a program called the Niger to Canada Jaffa system that helps people from all countries to do the Canada study process all that by themselves from getting to school, applying for admission, to apply for visa and we've helped so many families to come to canada um using that method doing it all by themselves now if you go here you might get you'll get details of how you can start this process i'm also going to put the link in the description don't ever believe anyone who tells you that you can do it yourself you don't need an agent you can do all of this process by yourself it's not rocket science i'm not saying it's easy but it's a simple process and once you follow the guidelines that we have in our system you would be able to come to canada and study all done by yourself we have testimonials upon testimonials you see the link also in the description people like you people who also thought they could not do it but ended up being able to do it check it out it's in the description i hope you got a lot of value from this i had so much fun answering these questions i'm going to have a part two because i have a lot of questions and keep your questions coming if you have any question you want me to answer in the part two of this video just put it in the comments below and i'm going to take a look at it don't forget to subscribe to the channel like this video share it with your friends and click the notification button so you will always be notified when we post new videos i'll talk to you soon bye for now